Greenville Downtown Airport is a Class B airspace. Communications are required to exit or enter the airspace. If we were going to exit the airspace, the first thing you would want to do is listen to the weather on the field, the ASOS. Once you have the weather written down and you understand which runway the winds are favoring, you're ready to contact ground control. Ground will clear you to taxi to the runway, and then once you've landed, clear you back to the ramp. The tower is used for takeoff and landing. Now, when you are using the communications, there's a few rules that you want to keep in mind. One is when you push the push to talk, make sure you know what you're going to say before you say it. Also, make sure that no one else is talking on the frequency and you're not going to key up over somebody else. The next thing is you want to answer three questions. Who you are, where you are, and what do you want? By answering these three questions, it's going to give the controllers a clear picture of what's going on for your flight. If they want more information, they'll ask for it. And when you ask, or when you tell them who you are, you always say your type aircraft and use your full call sign on initial call up with each controller. So for example, you may be Cessna 4642 Juliet. Now all the airplanes in the United States do have an N in front of the tail number, but it's not necessary to say the N, it's understood if you're in the United States, so we would simply refer to ourselves as Cessna 4642 Juliet. Once we've set our full call sign to the controllers and they've repeated it back, we always shorten it by the type of aircraft we are and then the last three letters or digits of your call sign. So once they've set our full call sign, we simply become Cessna 42 Juliet. Now, where you are, you may tell them that you're located on the tower ramp or the west ramp, whatever your position is on the field, or if you are coming into the airspace, you typically want to tell them your position relative to the airspace. For example, seven miles southwest inbound or nine miles east inbound. It just let them know where you are. And then finally, what do you want? So let's use an example. Let's say you're ready for taxi and you call Greenville Ground, Cessna 4642 Juliet, at the tower ramp, ready for taxi, westbound departure, 3000, negative flight following. The flight following is when we're asking the big airport, Greer Airport, to use their radar to follow us on our flight. So sometimes on our local flights, we don't really request flight following. And then usually when we go cross country, we definitely request flight following. The other things that are important is how do you know what to read back when the controllers give you a lot of information at once? The four main things that you need to repeat back would be your headings, your altitudes, hold short instructions, and clearances. So let me give you an example. If you called Greenville Ground and you said Cessna 4642 Juliet, tower ramp, ready for taxi, westbound departure, 3000, VFR, negative flight following, and they give you information back something similar to this. At this airport we have runway uh, 1 and 19 and 1028. So this runway would be runway 19 and this runway would be runway 1 and then we have runway 10 and 28. And we're located here on the northwest side on the tower ramp. And let's say that they gave you taxi instructions, something like this. Cessna 4642 Juliet, the winds are 030 at 5 knots, altimeter 2997, taxi to runway 1 via Hotel Alpha, hold short 1028. That was a lot of instructions all at once. The part that I need to repeat back to them was not the wind direction or the velocity or the altimeter setting, but I do need to repeat back my instructions for taxiing and certainly those hold short instructions. So they've given me permission to taxi via hotel alpha and then hold short runway 28. But they told me to taxi to runway 1. So I would have to repeat that back. Greenville Ground, Cessna 42 Juliet, clear to taxi, runway 1 via Hotel Alpha, hold short 28.
example of when it's time to take off. So your airplane is here at the hold short line and you call the tower. Greenville Tower, Cessna 4642 Juliet is holding short, runway one, ready for takeoff. And maybe the tower repeats back, Cessna 4642 Juliet, the winds are now 020 at 8, turn left on course, cleared for takeoff, runway 1. The part that we need to repeat back is not that wind direction, but it is cleared to take off, runway 1, and turn left on course. Because that left on course is kind of like a heading. They want us to go ahead and turn to our on course heading. And you would want to repeat that back. Now the communications are pretty difficult in the beginning, but the more practice you have, you'll understand that it is a sequence and you can use the same sequence uh, no matter which airport you go to. But this communication set is for a controlled tower airport and later we're going to talk about if you go to an uncontrolled tower airport, what communications you would use there.